Let a be equal to the two by two matrix, three, one, minus two, zero. Find an invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix D, such that D equals P inverse A P. Now, what are we really asking for here? So this problem is about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If I know my eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so let's suppose we have eigenvectors v1 and v2 with eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2, respectively. That just says av1 equals lambda 1 v1, av2 equals lambda 2 v2. So what's happening here? That just means if I take v1, I apply a, it's the same as just multiplying by a constant. So this is what happens with standard vectors in three space, say, when you multiply by a diagonal matrix. All you're doing there is stretching out the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So a diagonal operator, diagonal matrix, is the simplest linear map you can come across, next to the zero map or the identity map. Now, let's take a look at what's actually happening with this equation here. So suppose we have our eigenvectors, eigenvalues. We have our equations. If you know it, we could put this in matrix form if I put V1 and V2 as the columns of a matrix. Then when I hit it with A, all we're doing is apply A to the first column, apply A to the second column. Since they're eigenvectors, we just multiply by lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now, the way to read this off as a product of a matrix with a diagonal matrix, I have to put the diagonal with lambda 1, lambda 2 on the right side. Okay, it's a little counterintuitive, but if you think about it, if I put lambda 1 and lambda 2 on this side, that's how I multiply the columns by a scalar. If I put lambda 1 and lambda 2 on the other side, that multiplies the rows by a scalar, and that's going to play havoc with what we're trying to do here. So the diagonal matrix goes on the other side. Okay, but this is what we want because that's how our equation comes out. Now, if you note, what do I have? I have A, okay, we'll call this matrix P now. So P is going to be the matrix which has as its columns our eigenvectors. So I have A times P equals P times D. If I multiply both sides by P inverse, I get back our equation here. To finish, we push the numbers through. First, the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are just going to be the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. That's given by determinant, lambda times i, the identity matrix, minus a. That might seem a little mysterious, but that's just rewriting the equation we're trying to solve. Okay, we want to solve av equals lambda v. I move the av to the other side. That gives me lambda v minus av. I factor the v out. I get lambda i minus a, parentheses, times v equals zero. Now, why the i? Well, if I just put lambda minus a, okay, I'm going to be left with a number minus a matrix, and that doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, lambda times i times v gives me back lambda v. Okay, if I take the identity matrix times any vector, I get our vector back. So the proper factorization is lambda i minus a. Okay, that's the difference of two matrices now. Okay, we're going to find where this gives me zero when v is non-zero. So I want non-zero solutions to lambda i minus a times v equals zero. That can only happen if lambda i minus a has determinant equal to zero. So you'll note what our characteristic polynomial is doing is figuring out what lambda forces the determinant to be equal to zero. Now in our special case, we put our a in, what comes out? So we have this matrix here, get our polynomial by taking the determinant, we factor, set it equal to zero, and I get lambda equal to one and two for my eigenvalues. Next, eigenvectors. Note, we're still in the same equation. I want to solve lambda i minus a times v equals zero. I know I can only find non-zero solutions if lambda is equal to one or two. So we're looking for the null space when lambda is equal to one or two. Okay, if I let lambda be equal to one, get the matrix minus two, minus one, two, one. Looking for where I hit it with a vector, I get zero out. 
candidate's going to be minus 1, 2. Okay, if I apply A to that, I expect to get lambda V back. Here lambda is 1, so we expect to get V back. When I multiply our matrix times our vector, we get our vector. Nothing happens. So that checks out. Lambda equal to 2. We have minus 1, minus 1, 2, 2. One know what vector is when I hit it with that matrix, gives me 0. Candidate is going to be 1, minus 1. We hit our vector with the matrix. I get 2 minus 2 back. That's 2 times our vector, 2 times v, or lambda times v in this case. So that also checks. Now, we have two eigenvectors, get two eigenvalues. Our p matrix is given by using our eigenvectors as columns. When we do that, we expect for our diagonal matrix to get the diagonal entries to be the eigenvalues in the same order. So if I use minus 1, 2, 1, minus 1, I expect my D to be equal to the diagonal matrix 1, 2. Okay, let's compute P inverse and then see that our diagonal matrix comes out. P inverse, what do we do? Determinant here is minus 1. To get our inverse, flip the diagonal entries, negate off the diagonal, and then divide by the determinant. That gives me 1, 1, 2, 1. We set up P inverse AP. Okay, I'm going to start by doing A times P. I get this matrix here, and then we take it all the way, and that gives me my diagonal matrix 1, 2, as promised. If I'd chosen our eigenvectors in the other order, say I went with 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2, I'd get out the diagonal matrix 2, 1.